son is a former senior advisor to President Barack Obama and the world's leading authority on socially conscious leadership. As an international speaker and consultant, he has worked with organizations like Microsoft, Sodexo, KPMG, Verizon Wireless, Aetna, the American College of Healthcare Executives, Blue Shield of California, and the Boeing Company. Unfairness hurts everybody. And it may not be a healthcare crisis for you, but most of us experience unfairness in our work environment in every single day. Maybe you got passed over for a promotion. Maybe your department got downsized. Or maybe you show up every day in a toxic culture with a boss or a colleague who disrespects you, have disdain for you, and worse, might even discriminate against you. After a 20 plus year healthcare career of working with organizations, I know how to build a world-class culture. I know how to build a culture where you have the most diverse teams. They're high performing and every person that shows up to work wants to do their very best to help you to achieve the mission and achieve the bottom line. And the bottom line is taking care of the people that we serve. And so we have to build that world-class culture and I'm ready to work with you to find a way to make sure that we build it in your organization. Employees are frustrated at work. Many times they don't stay engaged and employee engagement is an all-time low. But more importantly, turnover is costing organizations billions. I read a study recently that said $223 billion is what costs employers because of turnover. And so the question is, why are people leaving an organization? Why is there absenteeism? Why are they burning out? Why are they giving up on the mission in the margin of an organization? And it's because there's a toxic workplace culture. The unfairness in a bad workplace culture is a dangerous thing for most organizations and it's something that people need to work on right now. But the challenge is most organizations don't know how to work on it. Because what you need is you need to build a world-class environment where every person feels valued, respected, and included, but more importantly, your leaders show up and they become the most admired leaders in your organization. It's because they're committed to delivering on three promises that every employee is expecting them to deliver on. And that is, do you care about me? Will you help me? And can I trust you? But the challenge is, is that most organizations don't know how to build that world-class culture. They don't have the time, they don't have the tools, they don't have the resources, and more importantly, even if they did, they don't have the confidence to implement the changes that are needed to build that world-class culture. But I know what you need. I know what people need to hear. I have those tools. I have those original ideas and those insights that will help you build a world-class culture with diverse, high-performing teams and great leaders that everybody admires. We all need that in our organizations, and it's up to us to build it right now to make sure that we don't have that toxic workplace culture. People quit their jobs every single day. One in five Americans has quit their job in the last five years. And on top of that, it costs to replace people, significant costs. It's low morale, low uh, employee engagement. People are not engaged, lack of productivity, absenteeism, people are frustrated at work, and these are the things that manifest themselves. And then when you look at the organizational costs, there's a high cost of unfairness. Your reputation at risk as a business because of the unfairness in your culture. Beyond that, harassment and discrimination claims go through the roof. You have smaller margins. You have less money, less profit for your shareholders, less money to reinvest in your business. And then the bottom line cost is, again, that $223 billion in turnover across the United States of America. So let's say if you built a world-class culture, what would it look like? You would literally have engaged employees. You have high-performing teams. You would have inspiring and empowering leaders that everybody wants to work for because they feel that I'm working for a great person. And then lastly, you'll have bottom line results that deliver more value to your shareholders, to your customers, to the patients that you serve. Are you ready? He is the best-selling author of The Presidential Principles and has been featured in Time Magazine, The Wall Street Journal, Inc. Magazine, BBC News, NPR, and on Good Morning America. Anton Gunn is a former director of external affairs at the Department of Health and Human Services under President Obama, also a health reform expert. Thank you so much, Thank Anton. You. Good to see you. You too as Thank well. You. Thank you. I loved Anton's talk. 
is very inspiring and funny. What I loved about Anton's message is the idea that there is never a wrong time to do the right thing. He's kind of got me thinking about what's next in my life and where I can do what truly, truly matters and will make an impact in the world. Oh my gosh. He's going to get you so excited that you're almost going to like, I don't want to say you want to pee your pants, but it's pretty close to it. Anton made me feel like I want to go out and do something. And I want to make it right. See, it was 10 years earlier on April 1st, 2004, that things went so wrong for my wife and I. See, we learned that we were going to be parents for the first time, that we were gonna have a baby. And just like any new parents, we had every amount of excitement about our baby girl coming into the world. But it was three weeks after that day that we learned that our health insurance company denied coverage for my wife's maternity. And I was in disbelief, utter despair, at how something like this could happen. And I turned to my wife and I said, babe, what went wrong? What did we do? How could this happen to us? And she said to me, I don't know what it is, but you better fix it before this baby comes. <laughs> See, what I would learn is that I made a simple mistake on the application for health insurance coverage. I checked the box of maternity under my name, but I didn't check it under my wife's name. So I had maternity coverage, but my wife did not. Now, I don't know about you, the last time I asked God, I wasn't going to have any more babies. So I was devastated. And then I heard a small voice in the back of my head. And it was Fred Sanford. And he said, you big dummy. How did you forget to check the box on the application? I still don't know to this day. But what I do know that that year, more than 20 million Americans had a very similar experience to me. They didn't have health insurance coverage when they needed it the most. And the pain of that situation felt so unfair. The unfairness was a great burden to me. I couldn't believe that I was there. But maybe it wasn't a health crisis for you. Maybe it was something else. Because this level of unfairness exists in all of our organizations and all of our lives. Maybe you got passed over for a promotion that you really deserved. Or maybe in your company's downsizing, you lost your job, but your team is still working. Or maybe you show up every day to work to be discriminated against, disrespected, and dismissed by a boss or a coworker. It doesn't matter what it was, no one likes to be treated unfair. No one wants to feel that level of unfairness. But when it happens to you, in that moment, you want somebody to make it right. You want somebody to do something to stand up and make a difference so things are right when they feel so wrong. That's what I wanted. I wanted somebody to make it right. But the challenge is, in our world, 95% of leaders don't make it right. February 2004 was the first time I stepped on this stage in the Township Auditorium in Columbia, South Carolina. There were 3,200 people that filled this room. And it didn't matter whether you were on that first row or whether you were in the top rafters up there. My whole goal was to give you an experience, not just a presentation, but an experience. I wanted you to understand something, that each person matters. And if you're a leader in your organization, you need to make sure that you're delivering the value to your team to know that each one of them matters. But many times, most organizational leaders don't know how to do that. They struggle with helping to build the kind of environment where every person is inspired, they're respected and they're valued, and they wanna show up to do the best job possible. My goal as a speaker is to help you 
build practical and actionable insights to make a difference for every person on your team, whether they're on the front lines or whether they're in the back room. It doesn't matter. My goal is to help you to be better and to be great. And so if you book me as a speaker, if you bring me into your organization, I can guarantee you this, you will get a phenomenal presentation that's not just a presentation, but an experience. Because I want you to understand that there are three questions that I know that you're asking that I'm going to answer with my presentation. Question number one is, do you care about me? Question number two is, will you help me? And the third question is, can I trust you? Well, I will tell you this. I'm a mission driven leader that cares about the people and the organizations that I work with. Secondarily, my goal is to help you to be successful, to help you to build a world class culture with diverse, high performing teams and great leaders that everybody can admire. And the third thing is you can trust that I will do my best to make sure that you not only have an impact today, but you have a lasting impact that builds the kind of culture that you want and that you deserve. And that's what I bring to every stage that I'm on. So whether it's the township with 3,200 people or your office conference room with 32 people, they're gonna get the same experience and it's one that I'm excited to provide for you and for everyone that you serve. Anton nailed it. He hit the mark there for me. The energy, the passion that man has for what he does and with his speaking. His powerful and masterful ability to tell stories really helped me to connect with him on a personal level. April 1st, 2014. I remember it as if it was yesterday. I was standing in the Rose Garden of 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. The sun was shining, the flowers were starting to bloom. I could smell the fresh cut grass all around me. I could hear the laughter and chatter of my colleagues who were standing behind me. And then I heard the most thunderous applause that I've ever heard in my life, greater than the applause you gave me today is when the President of the United States walked out of the Oval Office down the West Wing Colonnade and he walked right into the Rose Garden and he walked in front of us. And when he walked in front of us, he walked to the podium to give a speech and to make a statement about something that I knew we had already accomplished. And that was, we had done our part to help 7 million Americans get something that they most desperately wanted. And that was health insurance coverage. I remember hearing a story about Joe Montana, one of the most famous quarterbacks ever in the history of the NFL, say that he spent $1.4 million one year on a neck surgery and two knee surgeries. And he paid for it out of pocket because he didn't have health insurance coverage. And so that day was monumental for me. I stood there in full admiration of the moment and the man that we had helped 7 million people get coverage. And I started to think to myself, how did things get so right today after being so wrong? I know how to build a world-class culture. I know how to build a culture where you have the most diverse teams. They're high performing and every person that shows up to work wants to do their very best to help you to achieve the mission and achieve the bottom line. And the bottom line is taking care of the people that we serve. And so we have to build that world-class culture, and I'm ready to work with you to find a way to make sure that we build it in your organization.